This is GEA Embedded here on Ball Study, where every Monday throughout the GEA Championships, we're here with the best analysis. We'll talk to Darren O'Sullivan in just a couple of minutes as his carry crashed out of the championship. Tyrone and Maya will be the All-Ireland final. A big surprise for an awful lot of people. I don't think everybody in Tyrone would agree. We'll talk to Darren about that in a second. Loads more in the show as well, too. We'll uh, speak to Morris Brosnan about some of the TV coverage around the game, uh, be it the Sunday game or the live game on Saturday, and exactly what we're getting out of that and who it's serving. It's an uh, interesting discussion that we can have with both of us having very strong opinions on it. And Finchie is back with another great video for us, this time looking at some of the best losing performances from individuals on uh in gea history so a uh, class list to get into there but it's time to get to darren o'sullivan because kerry have been knocked out of the championship and Tyrone are in another all Ireland final darren Mick. how are you doing uh yeah look we, we'll, tr we'll try to keep this a little bit unbiased and make it a, 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 as as um as as general a conversation as possible but you're in a pub uh a uh, look fantastic i'm sure people in there on sunday trying to forget it uh the day after the match or even saturday night what's the reaction been down there what have people been talking about in uh in in the in your experience in the kingdom since uh since saturday evening um i think it's just disappointment in the performance really um if you break it down Kerry had enough of the ball they had enough opportunities to win the game um and the surprising thing from a Kerry point of view is the decision making was just so poor on the day. And um, especially with the structure of the game now, you know, you have your water breaks. So you have opportunities to rectify what's going wrong. And Kerry didn't do it. They failed to do it or, or the management failed to see it. Um, so I think the disappointing thing is so many players underperformed. And then a lot of players, they, they made the same mistakes over and over again so look take nothing away from it the better team won mm. harry can have no complaints and they have themselves to blame really far going out of the championship yeah i suppose that comes to kerry we're looking at it, saying them they have themselves to blame to rome will look at it and saying it was a game plan perfectly mm. orchestrated and, and and delivered um when it comes to Tyrone, right, so it's funny, you're going to talk to Morris later on about some of the TV coverage and about maybe it can be simplistic about hunger and intensity versus the actual analysis of what happened. But I do think it can feed into each other a little bit, you know, and it did seem like Tyrone came out. You saw Sean Kavanagh straight away on TV. You're going, oh, this is this is the internal line here is chip on the shoulder. People have been unfair to us. People have been out to get us. That's obviously going to feed into the group. It's going to feed into the management and you saw it even first 10 15 minutes thrown are like everywhere they're just like you know <laughs> like flies and shit is the only thing i can think of you know and, and that is hard to adapt to if you're not expecting it and that can be an indictment to kerry as well i'm not suggesting that they shouldn't have been ready but perhaps that they weren't the there of kerry they should have expected it yeah they might be used to it yeah because they paid nothing up to now but you should expect that and that that was a disappointing like tyrone didn't bring anything that we weren't expecting we all know what tyrone bring they bring this manic aggression it's borderline no that's all it is it's borderline they go to the edge nothing wrong with that mm. kerry should have expected it um and crow park is a pitch where you can avoid it crow park's a big pitch you stay wide and you kick you avoid the tackles and twos and trees kerry didn't do that kerry made the pitch narrow and they ran into traffic um now tyrone got their tactics right but we knew everybody knew what tyrone were going to bring kerry knew what tyrone were going to bring and just didn't adapt yeah why though because <laughs> i think even their narrowness was in defense as well you saw a lot of tyrone scores came from just having that overlap of nobody going with a man Hampsey's point I can specifically remember out of the right hand side came from exactly that you know they were narrow all the way through that point the one you're on about that comes from Connor Myler standing yeah. at Kerry forward up and just walking around him and the Kerry forward jogged after him it was just it was shocking um for me that was the worst score of the game you see two players going eye to eye and one fella just waltzes around him and the other fella watches him um and then there was a runner so like at times that you the, the backs get the blame but that was a forwards issue like you 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 start your defense from number 15. kerry didn't do that yesterday they didn't work hard enough and if you look at it i actually taught the full back line and the kerry backs get a lot of abuse and 
you know, we we picked on them and the show us that they weren't good enough and they always seem to get the blame. And I thought they were playing quite well at times yesterday, man on man. But then we left runners go. And it's very hard to keep an eye on one man and see these runners coming from everywhere. So I had a bit of sympathy for them yesterday. I thought for long periods, like Darren McCurry has been one of the top forwards in the country this year. He was very quiet. I think he got his first point from playing the 55th minute. Tom Sullivan was doing an excellent job on him. And like it all came, a lot of the scores, even the goals from runners coming from deep, which is a forwards issue that they weren't tracking. They weren't working as hard as the Tyrone players. So again, what, why? Like I, I, you know, and I, again, it's it's like we know what Tyrone are going to bring, even if it's like even if it's if it's a hyped up intensity to more than you expect at Grand, but we know the style that they're going to play. As Tommaso Shea said last night, they're going to they're going to do it. They've been doing it for ten years or so. M. Fitzmaurice in his examiner column today is saying like the players need to take a responsibility for this and not mm-hmm. hide behind the manager. The manager will probably change after this until someone new come in. But if they don't learn their personal lessons from what they did wrong, Kerry can't take that next step. Would you agree that this was a kind of a collective responsibility of they didn't do the job they needed to do on the day? 100%. Like, it can't always be the manager's fault. No, I do think the management got it wrong. I do think they got some of their changes wrong. Um, personnel probably wrong. Um but the players themselves didn't perform. Some of them didn't work hard enough in certain periods of the game. They let fellas go. It was highlighted on the Sunday game. They showed points where Kerry left runners go. You never saw a Tyrone fella leave a runner go. If anything, you saw two Tyrone fellas. Tyrone sensed the danger. Once Kerry were in a certain area and there was danger, it was red flag and you seen Tyrone lads running with everything they had to put a hand on him be in their eye line, get in the way. Kerry didn't have that. Kerry didn't sense the danger or they were too preoccupied with minding their own house. Mm. Where does it, like, I'm just trying to fit, put my place, uh, there's a, the Paul Ganey clip that they showed on the Sunday game last night. It's just one of many. But mm. like, uh, there was a point to me, there was a part of me that's just thinking like, that's a tough job to go every single time with them when, when they are running like that. If that's not drilled into you, if that's not, and I'm not making excuses, but if that's not drilled into you, if that's not something that you're doing every day in training or in every match, because let's face it, Kerry don't have to do that in every match. It's a very hard thing to just suddenly do in the in a random play in the 17th minute of the first half. You know, like... But that's, that's, that is something you have to do in every game. Yeah. yeah. It doesn't matter if it's a first round of the Munster Championship or an all in the semi-final. You're told, if your man goes, go. If a runner goes and you're beside him, he's your man, you get him. Like, I always remember in the dressing room before, and I remember it was, it was Declan Sullivan said it before, he goes, do you know about Twitter and Instagram, liking tweets and all, he goes, that's not somebody you're going to, like he was on about when you retire, he goes, I remember the fellow who bailed me out in the field, who tracked my man, not the fellow who likes and retweets my stuff. So there were times yesterday where a man went, and it might have been, the designated players, man, but they went. And if he's nearest you, you go with him. You bail out your buddy and he'll bail you out the next time. But fellas didn't do that. And that's a knock on effect. Do you know, if a fella sees he gets caught out of position and his man goes up, up the field and one of your teammates sees him and leaves him off, you're going to be less inclined to burst your ass to cover for him the next time. And that happened from very early days. And the surprising thing and the disappointing is that's not the players that I know and the Kerry supports would know. Mm. They looked like they were lacking energy yesterday. I don't know what it was. Maybe it was because they weren't used to that intensity of games. It very well could be. They had five weeks without a game. The Munster Championship, we've said, weren't games. The league games this year were glorified challenge games. No, that's not Tyrone's fault. Um. You could say it's not Kerry's fault, but they it might have been Tyrone's fault when they went down to Clarny, but other than that, <laughs> yeah, they are that game, they gave a nice small sense of security there. But like a lot of its basics, Tyrone they did a, a work carry, they made better decisions. Um, but at the same time, like you're, you're I keep looking at it, Kerry had a lot of the ball, David Moore dominated midfield, they had the opportunities, yeah. their decision making was wrong. Um, they had a chance to regroup at the water break. They had another chance to regroup at halftime. And then they had another water break to say, 
lads, you need to put, if you're coming in from an angle, put it over the bar. The goal isn't always on. Keep mm -hmm. the scoreboard tipping over. Tyrone did that. Kerry didn't. Yeah, it's it, it's it like people will think this is probably a little bit Kerry centric. It is understandable when you score, when you lose by a point in extra time, and you know where it didn't go well and where they didn't play well. That you do have to talk about it from Kerry's point of view, trying away. But from Tyrone's point of view, they did everything they were supposed to do. Some of that defending that did close out those goal chances was very very good, and they did everything right. I would say in in what they were trying to do. Just wondering, we'll talk about the final later on, but like. How good do you think this Tyrone team is? They came through a very difficult Ulster Championship. They, obviously, everything that's happened in the last few weeks, we kind of forgotten about them as an, as an entity. Everything was about their situation rather than their team. And then you see, like, this is, they're in an All-Ireland final with a 50-50 chance, you'd say now. Like, you know, that this is a team we, it's a, it's a, what's the way I'm looking to put it? It's a very, very, um, it's the right kind of successor for the teams of the 2000s, isn't it? It feels very like them. It has that same kind of character, same style, and same good footballers as well, which they, that the was what the last bit might have been what they've been missing in the last kind of seven or eight years. Well, I don't know what they're missing, the good footballers, but maybe the style of play, maybe they were too too concentrating on the defensive side of things. Yesterday, they, they seem to be getting the balance right all along. Their forward play this year has been excellent. They Like the Ulster Championship, I think we've all said it, that the Ulster Championship this year was brilliant. It was high score and it was attacking. The defending was maybe not where we'd expect it normally. Tyrone seemed to be getting that balance right. Yesterday, they had it perfect, or Sunday they had it per Saturday, they had it perfect. Their attacking game was brilliant. They kicked into space. They... Um, they counterattacked with runners and then defensively they were man on man but they sensed danger they never left anyone isolated or very rarely they they seem to be getting that balance right between defense and attack um and we probably did overlook them not Kerry I'm saying about everyone in Ireland like people talk about Dublin they talked about Kerry look, maybe we are getting overhyped with playing nothing down in Munster the league league and championship two different sports really um maybe the Kerry lads were listening too much to the hype maybe the supporters were listening too much to the hype um but tyrone got the balance right yesterday like the matchups were brilliant mcgeary and connor myler were exceptional mm -hmm. like their fitness levels on top of everything else very good footballers dogged tenacious they were up to feel not only did they mark their men but they gave him something to think about going the opposite way. Like, how many of the, the full back line were scoring? Like, it, the fact that so many of the Tyrone defenders scored, you're like, going, that's, that's more evidence that Kerry didn't work hard enough or they didn't track the runners. Um, it just, like, it's, it was so, like, trying to take off my Kerry hat, but it was just so, such a disappointing Kerry performance by yeah. so many. That um, like you can go through the team. I thought Tom Sullivan had a very good 55 minutes. Hmm. And later on, when you want him or Curry to step up, he got two very good points. He kicked a couple of frees. Um, I thought Paul Murphy had a good second half. Gavin White was good going forward. Dave Moore, I thought, was outstanding, to be fair. And I think him going off for extra time was as much of a loss as David Clifford, who was brilliant. Um, I felt when David Moore went off, they lacked that bit of composure. Yeah. Really, the prime example for me was um, David Clifford or David Moore won a one of three, a couple of yards outside the 45. Other fellas now would have been slowly getting up, putting it down the ground, waiting for Shawnee Shea. David was on the ground. He was looking up. He spotted David Clifford coming up. Quick 20-yard pop pass, bang, over the bar. They lacked that in extra time. Um, they lacked that bit of maturity. I think Tommy Walsh, who was, look, he was brave to take on that last shot, but who was there to try and take the ball off him? It wasn't. It was a very difficult chance for Tommy, but look, he had the bravery to go for it. I'd respect that every day of the week, but there was nobody looking to take the ball off him to help him out. Yeah, that's look. And I was thinking about this earlier because a lot of people are kind of having to go with Tommy Walsh. And look, I, I don't think he should have had the shot. I'm not defending it. But when we talked about Derry doing the same thing earlier in the year, you were defending the guy who took the shot because there was nothing else on. There was no, or they didn't take the shot, but you were defending the fact that they held on to it because there was never a shot on. And that's up to the people without the ball to go for it and to make a shot, whatever. It, it kind of, Kerry kind of fell between, isn't it? They did take the shot, but still nothing ever opened up and there was nobody trying to create that chance. And that, 
like it told me a lot i have to say about where they were because they'd fought back into it an extra time they should have had a little bit of momentum character. yeah exactly they'd actually showed that character but then it's like look david clifford's not on the pitch i understand that but there's still a lot of good forwards there to to just try and make that space or to beat the man and open it up or whatever it might be well that was the thing like and someone said to me oh david clifford's gone off your score was gone off and i was up well, that's rubbish because yes he was gone off he's a huge blow he was having a great game Shawnee Shea was still on the field Killian Spillane is a, is a scorer Paul Gain is a scorer that's what they're on the field to do and I'm not just pinpointing them boys but there was other players come on like like Kerry aren't a one man team or we hope or not um, we have good forwards starting but we also have very good forwards coming off the bench this is where character comes to the comes to the fore like this is where you want somebody brave to come take the ball and a lot of times there it could have been take the ball off tommy i think if a fella had gone into contact he would have got a free and you were looking for that bit of mature maturity and patience a bit of experience and it didn't come and um, i think fellas a lot of fellas didn't have a good game and fear fear crept in and they didn't want to be the person to taking the responsibility couple of comments here one of them uh from davy here saying why was uh potty clifford not switched inside he was left running around man marked wasting energy that's an inter- like and look he did a lot of work tracking back more than probably the rest of the carry forwards but i do wonder about that if you're being marked to be taken out of the game you know maybe this is well maybe this is the day then that we take that player out of the game you know and we stay inside and and just react i suppose to what is happening to you rather than sort of saying oh geez Tyrone are the one calling all the shots yeah and look that's the thing the players like obviously management should see it too players should see it and the thing is with that carry for like, they should be able to rotate fairly fluidly go in and go because they're all good enough playing the different positions and that's something you have to geez i'm getting no joy here i'm gonna shoot inside now i'm gonna stand top of this top of the square there for a while and bring him something differently so it is a thing that the players like they're all good players are good intelligent players but i think they got so sucked into what was a battle and it was all oh, geez i need to get the next ball and it wasn't working well and like it is one of the ones it's, it's like everything you look back and go oh he should have been put here but they should have rotated more do you know get a fella on a bit of handy ball do you know um but that was his role he was arguably the top player in the country going into this because of his link play that was what was making Kerry tick was Paddy Clifford around the middle, getting being the outlet for the defenders for a kick pass, being the link between the backs and the forward. So just because he was beaten yesterday, all of a sudden it is against. Oh, he should should have been put inside. But that's mm. easy to say after he was one of the top players in the country um, up to this point, doing that role, and he was just he was beaten by a. By a great performance yesterday um so look it's easy to say oh we should have done this we should have done that um a lot of that comes down to experience as well i think the players you know they should know these things look a bit of rotation i'm sure that that that's what they've done in, in previous games they've moved around but look tyrone got their matchups right yeah. kerry didn't um so kerry had five weeks to prepare for this they didn't prepare they didn't look like they prepared properly call a spade mm. they, they didn't look like the style of play that they were trying to play it, it was very narrow for me um tyrone had four weeks uh we call them inter- interrupted weeks but whatever work they did on the pitch or, or I suppose they did no work on the pitch but whatever work they did in the pitch they looked like the team who had more preparation they looked like they had more work done in terms of their matchups their style of play their fitness was off the charts um so kerry have to look at a lot of different areas not just tactically physically wise they 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 tired it should have yeah. been the way around yeah um eilish is the thing here the, the goal that was missed was criminally be raging if your minor team missed such an opportunity and it was a bad like i mean maybe paul should have shot himself and definitely stephen shouldn't have been standing in the square but i think that was the one real goal chance and it actually leads me to another point because like that those things can happen but there was a four or five other cha- times that i think kerry went for goal and look watching it on the tv you're thinking goals on here but i was really impressed with how quickly tyrone recovered every single time but 
that I think might be the question is why didn't Kerry realise that that was happening? Because in the Munster Championship, I'm sorry, but they're, they are goal chances. You're going to at least get your shot off. But Tyrone didn't. Tyrone were always able to just kind of swarm around the ball when it looked like it might be on before the forward, forward had the chance to actually let fly. Yeah, and that just comes, they sense danger. Like it was selfless defending. Fellas yeah. were willing to sacrifice their own man to nullify an opportunity for Kerry. Like it was just, it was brilliant defending. It's, it's not a surprise that that's what Tyrone were doing. They were throwing their bodies on the line. Um, they were leaving their man to go to the point of danger. And like, my thing is, look, a lot of the goal chances, they were half chances. Mm. Half chances. Yeah, you'd say go from, but they were just the wrong decisions. No, it was great defending, but like, you miss a goal chance, two goal chances, or we call them chances, they were half chances. Eventually, you say, look, we need to just keep the scoreboard tipping over. Like, and it was just, Kerry was so naive and impatient. Yeah. It was just beyond belief. But isn't that what Dublin would have done? Would have, like in, in without like Dublin aren't the team to be lauding up today, yeah. but the Dublin team of a few years ago, like they would have beaten that Tyrone team by slowing it all down and saying, right, you're not going to give us the goals today, but we'll pop, we'll take the life out of the game, and then we'll pop it over the bar when it finishes, you know. And well, that's what you be able to stop it. You keep the scoreboard tipping on. Next thing you're up to three, four, and then that opportunity opens up, and then you are clinical with it. Kerry never got to that point. They got a point up or a two points up. They couldn't kick on because they were giving Tyrone more energy. Like you miss an opportunity like that, it's like getting a kick in the stomach for yourself because you're gutted the chance you've missed. But you're also giving the other team oxygen. Do you know, like it's like a score. And Peter Hart made an unbelievable block at one stage on Killian Spillane. Killian Spillane's right footed. He was going in and he's turning towards the defender to kick with his weaker foot mm. and show the bar but you're there going you're going more towards the man it was just like i feel like a broken record it, it was just decision making by kerry and i put that down to their lack of proper match intensity proper match sharpness um and training you just can't replicate the same stress and pressure you're on in games and obviously look decision making comes down to being in that position and experience and I personally felt that this Kerry team should have had enough experience around the place. Yeah. Can I, um, sorry, Paul is saying no, no harm, lads. All you are talking about is how Kerry lost um, and not how Tyrone won. Tyrone were the better team at the end of it. And I think we, we agree with that, absolutely. And it's just, there's there's more to talk about when it comes to Tyrone and we are, get, we are alluding to it, but the Kerry thing is interesting in its own way. There's no, um, the... This is a, an unfair question, right? But if the game was played three weeks ago, mm-hmm. and would would Kerry have won it? Do you think? And, and I don't mean sorry. I'm not talking about against half a Tyrone team as it would have had to been. I mean if there was no COVID issues at all. And what I mean, what the reason I ask that is because what we're talking about is that lack of intensity, the lack of ambition. They still wouldn't have had those games be any better against Cork and Tip and so on, but they would have been fret. They would have been more recent, at least. I think the big thing is, I think if this game was played three weeks ago, you wouldn't have got the same impact off Dara Canavan and... Um, so, taking all the excuses out of it, I think the couple of weeks extra gave a few of the Tyrone lads that were struggling with injuries or on the way back a better chance to be available. Um, whether Tyrone would have been less impressive or Kerry would have been better, who, who's to know? Um, but I definitely think that uh, the extra couple of weeks would have helped Tyrone um, in terms of the, the likes of Colin McShane and a few more of them that were coming back from injury or had a few injuries and stuff, yeah. Um, so in that respect, you're taking one tree off Colin Shane coming off the bench. That's a that's a that's a huge impact. Um, so it would have been a different game. Uh, hard to know, really. Look, I just think Tyrone at this moment in time, they're finding that balance and they're they looking dangerous. And like like we were saying earlier, Sean was mentioning it before the Sunday game, they do have this um, unique ability 
to throw the chip on the shoulder and make it kind of us against the world. And um, that's an incredibly powerful thing for a team going out there thinking mm. nobody wants us to win. We'll prove them wrong. And um, yeah, look, they were the better team footballing wise. They made their better decisions. Um, I know we, I, I hate going down that road of, oh, they wanted it more, but they worked harder. And sometimes yeah. it is very simple. They worked harder. They were more intelligent on the ball. They saw danger quicker, which is game intelligence. And I, I, I like we keep going back to Kerry, but the thing, I think, like you said, it is interesting that Kerry were, were so poor. Mm. They had opportunities, and you put it down to poor decision making. But also, Tyrone got so much right. I just think Kerry had five weeks to prepare for a game. You know what Tyrone are going to bring, but they still look like it was the first time ever playing them. Yeah, I kind of asked this question earlier, but I don't think I worded it right. Like, and it, it just goes to what you're saying. If Tyrone are coming out like if uh, making all those runs and doing it for 70 minutes and you have to 90 minutes as it turned out the mm -hmm. last night, and you do have to do it in every game as you say but it, you don't actually do it you can't it's impossible people will say hunger or wanting it more and it's not that but if you have that chip in your shoulder and you are you know just like a zealot almost in your belief in going out and doing this for the team if momentum is the wrong word but if, if the game is going your way and the tactics are going your way it is it must be easier to make that run you know like it must be easier to track that man than when you feel like it's getting away from you or you feel they have our number today like it's not an excuse but i'm just trying to figure out why one team would be doing it when the others aren't it's not fitness surely and it's not hunger you know what is it no like adrenaline gets you so far but like you said about tracking the man <sighs> How often did a Tyrone man have to track a Kerry man? Because very rarely Tyrone coughed up possession in the forwards and had to run back to mark space or track. They, they didn't have to do it. Most of the running was done on Tyrone's terms. Tyrone were a lot more um, shrewd up front. They didn't cough up ball, which means they had to go trying to nullify Kerry's counterattack. Whereas most of the runs Tyrone were making, or they were making from the backs forward, which is always an easier run. It's way easier running towards the opposition goal than it is running back towards your own. Mm -hmm. And I don't remember, very rarely in the game, Tyrone ever having to really put on the afterburners and chase one of the Kerry players running into space. Um, mm -hmm. Most of the runs they were doing were on their own terms. And like that, if I go on a run this time, you might sit back and when you're going on your run i'll sit back so you you have ways of doing it where different fellas are getting their breeders at different times but for me terry did most of the track the chasing backwards which yeah. is a lot more draining it's a lot harder to chase somebody than have someone chasing you and i think yeah. that was the key to it uh like, like we said they did it for seven, 90 minutes which was absolutely insane stuff um Kerry, I, I do think it comes down to they hadn't been pushed like that. They hadn't been tested. So many of them were going down with cramps. They didn't seem to have yeah. the energy laid on. And that's another area they'll have to look at because if you're not going to get tested in the build-up to these games, you have to alter your training. And look, obviously, I'm not in there. I don't know. But for me, too many of them were running out of steam. Yeah, a lot of cramp. I haven't seen... I haven't seen that many from one team in a long time. Uh, to, to your point, though, Tyrone got 2-9 of their 314 from turnovers, um, which I think says a lot. And look, yeah. in credit to them, rather than necessarily even Kerry, they always played the game on their terms. Just one last thing before we go on, again, from a Tyrone point of view. I thought um, Niall Morgan's performance yesterday was like... Even, even some of the kickouts, they didn't always go the way and the numbers might not look good, but just in terms of what he's always trying and how he does almost play as that quarterback and be that in open play or from kickouts. He really is, if Cluxon isn't going to be around anymore, Morgan is now the standard, isn't he, in terms of what a modern goalkeeper should be doing. And I know we had the, the Began versus Morgan kind of madness in the Ulster final and look, Roy Began's outstanding as well, but... Morgan is that sort of is the gold standard at the moment, isn't he? Oh, he is, and he, he is like a sweeper quarterback. And well, he also he brings an assuredness, I think, to the defenders. They they have great trust in him. They have trust to give him the ball. They also have trust that if a ball goes 
over him that he'll be there to to collect it that he'll be off his line um obviously he kicked a ridiculous free um which i think would be replayed for years and years to come but he is like he he's a he's a footballer first and foremost he's a footballer that plays in goal is what i describe him as and i think i think that that gives the tyrone defense great confidence on that there's actually seven of them there to, so when they do turn out they have an extra outlet that is comfortable on the ball he's no problem carrying it or picking out a pass and like that he sees he has the whole pitch in front of him he sees danger so if carrier come up the field he's pushing out and he's looking at other oh, space there and he's probably getting a head start to cut off that space where he's anticipating the ball to travel so for me he's the platform do you know and in fairness the kickouts they weren't great yesterday Kerry dominated but i think it's the probably an aura or the confidence that he gives in the defense mm. that they can go they can go for it like if balls coming in they have no problem they're not going to stand back and leave a fellow in handy they're going for it because they have great trust in him behind them yeah absolutely well look there's, there's even more we could talk about here it was such an unbelievable game but um in the end throwing were too good for Kerry and Kerry go back to the drawing board they'll be doing it without Peter Keane you'd imagine without like I mean it's the the, the three years yeah you know, is up and it probably feels like a natural transition at this point yeah I think look I think he got three years I'm not sure maybe he might look for another year um whether he'll get it now I think they've underperformed and um I just don't I just don't see who is the ready-made replacement mm. at the moment. Whoever it seems gets it or the names you're hearing, um, they would be a bit of a punt. Um, you're you're not you're not getting um probably a ready-made replacement, I don't think. But my thing is really with the uh, carry management, it's about a management team. Do you know you're not gonna get one perfect manager, but I think if the, if if a man gets the job and he surrounds himself with the right people i think they could do very well but i think it's about a team in general not just like you can name out any manager go oh, he will or won't do well but i think it's about the personnel he brings with him because there's just so much more to it i think if you're the manager of the team now you're you're managing you're not the best coach in the world or snc or whatever you're getting the best people available to you around you and then you're managing them and you're managing the team so um it'll be an interesting one uh, like that to be names going around for a while yeah. i'm not sure what peter's plans are but look it'll be an interesting one because like we've said earlier kerry 2014 since their last all ireland becoming a famine um so they need to make the most of it yeah well a famine seven years and counting never i didn't even think it didn't even realize that but she was doubling one six in a row so yeah um James Horan was at the match yesterday with Kieran McDonald uh, watching on, or Saturday, I should say. Yeah. They've had a fair warning on that uh, Tyrone performance, and, you know, I think they, they probably would be ready anyway. They'll have four weeks off, um, which is a long time, and obviously we're talking about Ke Kerry being off for five. Um We'll have a proper chat about it and we'll go into the details and stuff like that before the final. But if you were to call it now, two weeks out, Mayo, to break the, the their famine, a real famine, not a Kerry famine, <laughs> or Tyrone to do it again. Um, on yesterday's performance, to be fair, like I've been tipping you called Mayo. Mayo. Mayo so, um, I just think, I think Mayo would have preferred to play Kerry. I think on Tyrone's performance, if they can bring that same... I'm going to call a level of control to the game where they control the opposition and play their own game. I've said it before, they're the only team that can play two games in one match or, or two matches in one game, whatever way you want to put it. They can nullify you and play their own game. I think with Mayo's running style, they're very good at um, directing you into traffic, Tyrone. So on yesterday's evidence or Saturday's evidence, I'd be tipping Tyrone. Okay, there you go. So that's a change. So now you've recovered. You've tipped Tyrone to win the match. You've tipped Mayo to win the all <laughs> Darren, thanks. Look, he's confused. Kerry have been knocked out. Surprisingly. Or knocked out, surprisingly. Darren, thanks so much uh, for a uh, great analysis there. And we'll chat to you before the final. Cheers, Nick. Talk to you later.